Welcome back to another design pattern video. In this video, we're going to learn about the singleton pattern. So what is the singleton pattern? It limits the implementation of objects to a single instance. It helps coordinate data and functions across the application. And it can help reduce unnecessary memory usage. So what are some reasons why you might not want to use the singleton pattern? It may introduce unnecessary restrictions. Singleton patterns are available anywhere in the application, making them global objects. And they're available by anything, which may mean that dependencies may not be immediately visible, meaning developers may need to know inner workings of a singleton. And they may be difficult to test. What are the requirements to make something a singleton? It needs to ensure that only one instance of the singleton exists and it provides global access to the instance. So what are some examples of singletons or places where you might commonly see them? You might have a logging function that is a singleton. You don't want to create a new instance of a logger every time you call a log. You might have some global config and that's what we're going to build in our first example. Config should come from a single source of truth. You don't want to have multiple sources of truth for your config object. And you might use a singleton for a database connection. Many instances can lead to high memory usage. And a database connection is what we're going to use in our second example. So what is the video structure? We're going to have a simple example, and that is this global config object. And then we're going to have a more complicated example. We're going to create a database connection. And we're going to do this twice, one with classes and one with functions. So let's get started with our simple example. So you can see here I have four files. Our index file just requires our file one and our file two. File one just requires our config and we're going to call config.set. So we need to implement this set method. And then we're just going to log out config set. And then in file two, we're going to require our config. And then we're just going to get some config. So in this case, we're going to get a host and a host is what we set in file one. And then we're going to log out our host. So if we have a single instance of config, we should then be able to set our config in one file and get it in another file. And finally, we have our config object, and this is what we need to implement. So if we implemented this without a singleton pattern, we're going to have multiple instances of config. We're going to have one in file one and file two, and we then would expect host to be undefined but we're going to implement a singleton and so host is not going to be undefined in file two. So to create a singleton, we're going to use an iffy, which is an immediately evoked function execution. It's basically when you declare a function that executes itself. So we're going to say function, and this is going to be an anonymous function because we don't need to name it because it's going to get executed straight away. And then we can use our brackets at the end here to execute it. And then we need to wrap our function inside some more brackets. So as soon as we require our config object, we're going to call config here and our function is going to get executed. If we didn't want to use an iffy, we could say something like config and then we can say module.export is config and we just execute our config object here. But I'm going to use an iffy. Let's define an object for our props. So I'm going to say const props equal to an empty object. Next, I'm going to define an instance of our config object. So I'm going to say let instance. Next, we're going to say if instance, then we're just going to return this instance. And if we don't have an instance, then we need to return one. So I'm going to say instance is equal to an empty object. And then after we define instance, we can simply return it. Our config object is basically going to be a factory function. And this factory is going to return an object that has several methods on it. The first method is going to be get. The next method is going to be set. And we can also have an has method on here as well. So get is going to take a prop. Set is going to take a prop and a value. And has is just going to take a prop. So in our get method, we're going to say return props. And then we're just going to get the prop by the argument that's passed in. So this prop that's passed in is just going to be a string that is the key of a property on this props object. To set a property, we're going to say props, prop, and this should be prop, not props. 
is equal to value. And then finally, our has method is going to be const value is equal to props. And we're going to get it by the key. I'm going to return value not equal to null and value not equal to undefined. We can't just return something like boolean value because the zero is obviously going to return false, but the value in prop could actually be zero. Okay, so we have our singleton here. Let's run this application and verify that it works. So you can see here that we get config set, and then we say got host, which comes from file two, and we log out the host that we set. So our singleton is working as expected. Let's go create a more complicated singleton with a class. So I have this file here, and our goal is to implement a database connection using a class-based singleton. So I'm gonna say class database. I'm gonna have a static property called instance. And the underscore here just denotes that this is a private property. It's not necessary. And in fact, most of the time, I'm just going to omit that underscore because it's pretty redundant in my opinion. Next, I'm gonna have another static property called count. And we're just going to use this to see how many times our class was initialized. So you may be wondering what static means. Static methods and static properties cannot be called on the instance of a class. Instead, they're called on the class itself. And I'm gonna show you what that actually means later on. Next, we want to have a constructor. And our constructor is just going to initialize the database connection. So I'm gonna say mongoose.connect. And we wanna to connect to our DB endpoint. And then we can call dot then. And we can add a little log here that says console.log connected to database. Okay, so next we need to provide a get instance method. And this is also going to be a static method. So I'm gonna say static get instance if this dot instance, then we're just going to return this dot instance. And I'm gonna add a console log here as well so we can see when this is called. So let's say console.log returning instance. Otherwise, I'm going to say this dot instance is equal to new database. And this is where we initialize this class database. I'm going to say this dot count equal to this dot count plus one. And then I'm going to return this dot instance. Okay, so this is our singleton complete. Let's go test it out. So to create a new instance of our database, I'm going to say database dot get instance. And if you were to use this in real life, what you would do is you would say const db is equal to, and now you could use db to call your database. But I'm just going to call get instance a bunch of times so we can see that our instance is only ever created once. So let's run this. And you can see here that we're just returning the instance a bunch of times. Let's add a log down here that says console.log creating instance. I'm gonna run this again, and you can see that we created the instance once, and then we just returned the instance over and over again. Let's go implement this again, but this time let's use a function. So I'm gonna say function database. Then I'm gonna say let instance. I'm gonna say let count equal to zero. And this time I'm going to use async await. I'm going to say async function connect. I'm going to say const db is equal to await mongoose.connect. And we want to connect to our db endpoint. Next we're going to say console.log connected to db. And we want to return our database. Next we need to return a get instance method. So I'm going to say async function get instance and say count plus plus the console.log db and I just want to log the count so I'm going to say get instance count 
Next, I want to do our check to see if we already have an instance. So I'm going to say if instance return instance. Otherwise, we now need to create our instance. So I'm going to say console.log no instance creating db connection. I'm going to say instance is equal to await connect. And this needs to move up inside of get instance. And then finally, get instance just needs to return the instance. And our function database is a lot like our class in that it's just going to return an object. So I'm going to return our get instance method and our count. Okay, to make sure this is a singleton, we're going to have to say const db is equal to database, and we need to execute that function. And because database returns async functions, we need to run this inside of an async function. So I'm going to say async function run. I'm going to say await db dot get instance. And I'm just going to execute this a bunch of times. If you were to do this inside of your application, you would create a file called database, and then you'll just export your executed database function. So you would just say module.exports equals database, and then you just execute it here. But I'm just going to put this all in one file for simplicity's sake. And we can run our function file. And you can see here that we're going to get one instance. And then we say there's no instance. We're going to create the connection connected to the database. And then we're just going to return the instance for one, two, three, four, five calls. So that is how to implement a singleton pattern in JavaScript. If you enjoyed this video, please let me know in the comment section below what design pattern you would like to see next. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.